welcome everyone to Northside Sports Gym, the site for the first ever San Antonio Sports All-Star Game featuring 120 senior basketball players from San Antonio and the surrounding areas. Thank you everyone for joining us on this fine Sunday afternoon. I am Larry Ramita. She is Mary Rominger. And Mary, behind us, teams are getting ready to practice for the first of four All-Star Games today. I'm so excited. Me I'm, too. I'm almost nervous because of all the anticipation. And our first matchup will feature girls made up of seniors from Class 4A all the way through the private schools, and you'll be able to watch them live here on KSAT 12. And let's take a closer look at those student athletes today being here in just a little bit. The senior All-Stars from Class 4A to 1A and the private schools are split into two teams, Team Black and Team Gold. Team Black is coached by David Farber from Lavernia High School. His squad was practicing at Central Catholic this past week to get ready for their final game as high school basketball stars. It really is so exciting because I, did, I am not playing basketball in college, so this really is my last real basketball game, and it's just super sentimental for it to be with all the best people in this first all-star game, so it's really just an honor to have such recognition for a sport that I love so much. Hopefully my entire family will be able to make it. My sister is going to come down from College Station to watch me, so that's really awesome. She hasn't been able to see me play at all this year because she's been in college, so the fact that she gets to be there means a lot to me. We're like best friends, so that means a lot. And also my grandma from California is flying down too, so that's really awesome as well. We're going to find a way to put the ball up. Um, even this year as a coach, the first time in, in all my years of coaching that we tried to put it up as much as we could. And we were getting, I mean, there was a game we had 82 shots. And that's that's hard to get 82 shots in a, in a game. We're going to put it up in an all-star game. People don't want to see us just come down and, and sit still. They want to see some action. They want to see some running. They want to see some threes. They want to, we want to yell. So we're going to try and give them that. You know, the three ball is just, it's big. So these kids hitting one is or two or three, or, you know, hopefully we make a whole bunch of them. So... It'll be good. Well, I am very excited to represent my family um, in the basketball game because my brother did the football game and he, you know, he put Divine on the map, you know. But for me to do it in a girls basketball game, the first of its kind, it is very exciting and it's a great opportunity to be given and I'm very thankful for that. Well, game plan is very simple. It's win and that is what we are going to do. Boom. As for Team Gold, they're coached by Amy Reedy from Bernie High School. Reedy's squad started practicing for today's action on Wednesday out in Bernie before one final team gathering here at Northside Sports Gym yesterday afternoon. KSAT 12 Sports made the trip out to Bernie earlier this week to see how their prep work was coming along. And there's a little bit of a rivalry between both coaches Reedy and Coach Farber. So it's David Farber, and he is, was at Lavernia, but he also coached at Bandera. So we played against each other for a lot of years. His wife was actually our principal here at Bernie when I first came to Bernie. So a lot of history there. There will be a little bit of trash talk, I'm sure, on Sunday. Yeah, but it'll be a great time. Would this be a pretty incredible super team if you were able to just have this group? Oh, yeah, for sure. We, we, were, we were looking at our roster when we first got it, and we were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we knew we knew we were going to have some really good players, so we've been really excited and been kind of shuffling names around and moving kids from spot to spot. You see, you know, the stats, you, you hear about them playing. Personally, I've never played any of the schools that I'm teamed up with just because I'm a smaller private school. So seeing, you know, the real talent that's out there that I haven't been able to go up against, but now that I can and that I have all this talent on my team, I think it's going to be a really great tournament. Avery's an incredible talent. She's big, she's strong, and she is not taking it easy on me. You know, so working hard down there, she's a little, she got a little bit of height on me a little bit of strength on me but you know going up against her is only going to make me better and it's only going to make her better as well. She's long. She's long and obviously you know we don't get to play against that very much. Most of the teams that we play against are on the shorter side of the post height and um, they're usually more physical not usually as long so it's good for me to play against you know different different style different person different bodies. It will be my last basketball game ever so just having fun with the game playing with some teammates that I've had from years up but also playing with some new friends that I'm able to create so just having fun with the game and just being myself. You can hear their excitement, can't you? Here is the schedule. The girls' game is next, followed by game two that will feature boys from class 4A to the private schools. Then it's the skills challenge and three-point contest starting at 4.45 p.m. And, of course, we'll have plenty to show you between the games. And then in prime time, the boys and girls from class 6A and 5A will take center stage. That is it for us. We'll see you after the game. We'll be right back.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Northside Gym. As we welcome you to our coverage of the San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game right here on KSAT 12. Bobby Stotzenberger joined by Lori Wilson. She's the head basketball, girls basketball coach at Lytle High School, and she is also the athletic director there as well. And uh, what a great opportunity for these young ladies to participate in an all-star game. This is class 1A through 4A plus the private schools. It's going to be a lot of fun for these kids. Yeah, and, and I think uh, the ones in the smaller schools are more excited because, you know, they don't get a lot of time on TV. So today's their last chance to, to represent their community. And uh, it's just an awesome, awesome feeling today in the gym. Well, you have a, a personal connection to this one. Uh, well, your star player, uh, Kalissa Severe, has uh, been for four years a star for you at Lytle, and she's a star in this game for the Black All-Stars. Yes, uh, she's broke every record there at Lytle. She's going to graduate with over 3,000 points, and uh, David Hinojosa did a little small article on her, and uh, she's like in the top five, you know, uh, to leave that record here in San Antonio. Well, uh, her coach will be David Farber. He's from Lavernia High School. This is his uh, swan song, so to speak. He's retiring at the end of this year. So one more chance for him as a coach. So I hope, I know you're, as a coach, an opportunity to be in this game and coach this talent's got to be fun for him as well. Yeah, what a great way to go out. So excited for him. And he's such a great guy. I got to attend a couple of practices they had, and uh, he's he's a lot of fun. It's going to be a, a, a tough challenge for David Farber and the, uh, the Black All-Stars. The Gold All-Stars have a lot of great talent. Amy Reedy, the coach at Bernie, who's taken them to the state tournament three of the last four years. There you see her at Bernie High. She's got two of her star players in Abby Smith and Avery Aaron, who, who are just both all-state players. And they're, they also have their rival player, Taylor Grona. Carrie Grona, a longtime coach at Fredericksburg, her daughter's in this game. They are fantastic. And that, for once, Fredericksburg and Bernie get to work together. And it should be interesting to see how they uh, work together as teammates. Yeah, it'll be awesome to see them on the court together. All right, folks, we're going to take our first break. As uh, coming up, we'll have our starting lineups being introduced here at the gym. But we'll take a timeout first. This is the San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Back here at Northside Gym as we go to the PA announcer here today, Milton Hope. Introducing our reserves, a 5-3 core from Blanco High School, number two, Mina Broyles. A 5-6 guard from Floresville High School, number three, Mackenzie Huron. In the post, six foot from Christian School at Castle Hills, number 13, Peyton Brown. And now our starting lineup, a 5'7 guard from Fredericksburg High School, number four, Jordan Zinner. A 5'7 guard from Canyon Lake High School, number six, Sophia George. A 5'8 guard from Fredericksburg High School, number one, Taylor Grona. A six foot forward from Bernie High School, number 15, Abigail Smith. And a six one forward from Bernie High School, number 25, Avery Aaron. Head coach for Team Gold from Bernie High School, Amy Reedy, assisted by Trey Graham and Kemi Keen. And now the players for the home team, Team Black. A 5'10 forward from San Antonio Christian High School. Number five, Ava Welch. A 5'7 guard from San Antonio Christian. Number 11, Emily Mathis. A 5'3 guard from Cole High School. Number 15, Kamira Childs. A 5'7 guard from Poth High School. Number 22, Ryan Miller. 
A 5'11 guard from Antonian High School, number 24, Ella Neitz. A 5'6 guard from Divine High School, number 40, Denise Contreras. And in the post, 5'8 from Divine High School, number 50, Leah Romero. And your starters today for Team Black, a 5'3 guard from Ubaldi High School, number three, Kendra Garcia. A 5'7 guard from Lavernia High School, number one, Clara Fike. A 5'7 guard from Lytle High School, number 10, Kalissa Sevier. A 5'8 guard from Pope High School, number 33, Kaylin Castro. And in the post, standing 5'10 from Cole High School, number 21, Abby Levings. The head coach from Lavernia High School, David Farber, assisted by David Hill and Heaven Munster. That is PA announcer game manual, Supi Sepulveda, Milton Peter Hope, Ortiz and Pilar Pinkett. voice of UTSA Roadrunners as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please as we will now step aside and for the playing the of our national, national anthem. anthem. Presenting the colors for our game, the color guard from Highlands High School Junior ROTC. Singing our national anthem this afternoon is Colonel Princess Aturise from Columbus, Georgia and stationed at Joint Base San Antonio at the United States Medical Command. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleam broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly back with the opening tip the girls 1a through 4a plus private school it's the sa sports all-star basketball game right here on ksat 12. back at Northside gym bobby stotzenberg along with lytle ad and head girls basketball coach lori wilson and now let's introduce the third member of our crew from ksat 12 nick mantis down on the court Excitement down there, Nick. It's going great down here, guys. A lot of excitement as we get ready for this gold and black showdown for this great game. When speaking with Coach Farber before this game and during the practices, he said that after 33 years of being a coach, whether it was at this the, his entire career, he said the waterworks and a little bit of the excitement before this during the national anthem is what's going to get him. I see a little bit of tears as we get ready to go this game and. Uh, First basket right there. You there you go. And Avery Aaron, the All-Stater from Bernie, not only did she win the tip, she got the first basket. It's two to nothing gold. First possession here for the Black All-Stars as they'll have a top of the key three. And guess who? Nice three from Calissa Severe. 
That is Coach Lori Wilson's Clarissa Severe. You saw that a lot in the, four, the last four years, haven't you? Yeah, she had to carry the team, team pretty much the last four years, so she's ready for this game. Nice pass from Avery Aaron and down low, Taylor Grona. How about that? Bernie to Fredericksburg. Grona with the basket, four to two gold. A four to three, rather. I, Severe had a three point shot for Team Black just moments ago as Castro has it and loses it on the floor. And a break the other way now for Team Gold as Zenner from Fredericksburg passes it off to Grona. And they back it out to Avery Aaron. Avery has worked her game where she can work out on the perimeter. She's a three point shooter now as well as she's developed over the years. Wide open is Grona for three. And it's no good. Team Black pushing the ball down the floor. Hopefully get a quick basket here. It is Castro from Poth out to the out high to Fike from uh, Lavernia. Weaves it off to Severe. She drives in. Nice oh. pass, but Levings, Abby Levings from Cole wasn't quite ready for that. And and uh, Lori, that's just you only have a couple of practices. Uh, I think if they played together a little longer, they would have read that a little better. But it was a great uh, open pass. Yes, definitely agree on that. So uh, we're just underway here, and the team gold with a four to three lead and the possession. A nice step move inside and the travel. Well, they call a travel on Avery Aaron. That was a nice little double team they had on her. She's really hard to stop in the post as we have our first substitutions in the uh, game now as uh, Team Black with the basketball races it up. They are moving from uh, right to left as you look uh, to your so screen. Good. And a steal by Grona. Taylor Grona averages this season five steals a game. Just inside Ooh, the arch, nice I believe. Three. That's a two-pointer. And that is McKenzie Huron from Floresville with the basket. Team Gold now six to three. Oh, her foot was just on the line. On the right wing side, it is Castro, and now out high, a three-point attempt by Levings, no good. Rebound, Team Gold, 6-3 lead, and Avery Aaron races it up. Aaron throws it all the way across the court and a traveling violation just as soon as she caught. Let's take a look at some of the backups here if we can as there's plenty of talent on both of these teams. As you see uh, Team Black uh, bringing it up. We'll flash through uh, the entire roster here momentarily so you can see all the players available as uh, Fike has it for Team Black. And nice. now a dribble drive into the lane as Castro no good. Rebound Avery Aaron. Get back. Throws it all the way to Grona, who's waiting underneath, but she can't complete it. Fight gets a rebound for Team Black. Up the floor she goes. Oh. And Severe puts it up and gets fouled. And Calissa Severe, tell us about this young lady. You've had her for four years. She's been great for you at Lytle. Yeah, she's just a hard worker. Uh, I think the one thing about her is she's just so humble. Um, Lead, you know, leads the team, tries to get everybody involved. She's just an all-around athlete. She's a four-sport athlete out there at Lytle. That, and that's the kind of athlete you need when you're in a small school. You have to share. Well, she averaged 26.8 points a game, if you think that's any good. Eight rebounds, five and a half assists, and six and a half steals per game. And she's also a great free throw shooter, 80%, as she makes both free throws. And now it's a six to five game. Severe has all five points for Team Black as the ball goes out of bounds. We approach the midway point of the first quarter. Team goal with a six to five lead here. And free throws coming for Sophia George. First shot no good. Sophia George from Canyon Lake High School, a five seven guard. Takes the second shot that's good. 7-5 gold. Nice pass nice. underneath, and Levings can't complete it, though. Good pass, though, from Castro. Team gold with the ball. Step back three. Yes. Nice look there by uh, Sophia George. 
A three-point shot makes it 10 to five goal. Here comes Fike. Off to Levings. And throws it into the middle of the floor and uh, Garcia gets it back. That's Garcia driving in and can't finish. Young lady from Uvalde oh, and now steal. And all the way in for the bucket is Kathleen Castro from Pope High School. She also has a twin sister. Uh, they're real fun to watch out there in Poth. Poth has had a great deal of success. And the boys made it all the way to the regional finals, in fact, as we have a break in the action. And 3.46 to go here in the first quarter of play. Team goal with a 10-7 lead. You are watching the San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Back to play here at the girls 1A through 4A plus private school all-star game. Team goal with a 10 to 7 lead and the basketball. Turnaround three is a little bit short there from Sienna Kramer from Navarro. And Team Black fouled in the backcourt. Nick Mantis down on the floor with a little word on superstar Avery Aaron from the uh, Gold Squad. Well, guys, one of the things that she told us during the practices ahead of this All-Star game was that she took some time to just breathe and step away from basketball after their third straight loss at the state tournament. And one of the things that helped her do was get back in the love of basketball through these practices as she comes back on the court right now, leading this team with a lot of confidence with her head coach right there on the sideline with her. Well, you got to take a break once in a while, Lori. It's been all basketball for Avery Aaron and these girls for a long time, and a little breather away from it and back on the floor again. Yeah, just to refresh yourself is always good. Team Gold gets a steal. That's uh, Atlanta Estes from Hondo all the way down the floor to Jordan Jenner from Fredericksburg who lays it in. Nice fast break. On the other end, a three. Pretty long range that time. Ryan Miller from Poth. A little bit short on that basket. And here come the uh, Gold All-Stars with a 12-7 lead. First game of four here on KSAT 12. Should be a lot of fun today as center has an open three left wing side. No good. Ella Neitz from uh, Antonian fires it underneath and a steal by the uh, Gold All-Stars. Grona up ahead to the left wing and a shot taken by Huron. No good. And then lost out of bounds by Team Gold as center couldn't hold it on the baseline. 12 to 7 is the lead. And the Black All-Stars with the basketball. Meets, wheels around, takes a three. Good. Ellen Eats from Antonian High School. Averages seven and points a game this season. She was 38% from three-point land on the year. And nice Team Black defense. gets a steal. They break it all the way and good stop there at the end by Ellen Eats to lay it in. Ellen Eats has come alive here for Team Black. Yes, she has. So it's tied now at 12 as we get an air ball three. And Coach, one of the things in an all-star game is we have four coming in. Your primary focus, particularly in the first half and maybe even for the first three quarters, is to let all the girls in to play. Yeah, I, I heard Coach Farber talking to the girls about the playing time. You know, he's going to try to sub them in every four minutes. So that's kind of hard. Sometimes you start getting in that rhythm, and then you got to come out of the game. It's a little different in an all-star game because the goal is to play first and win second. Exactly. Open three, a little short there by Neitz and out of bounds, but... And then you also I guarantee you in the fourth quarter, these coaches will be coaching to win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we all want to remind the girls, too, they're out here having some fun. Some of them might be their last time to play. That is true. Some of these young ladies will be playing college basketball. We get a steal by Emily Mathis, San Antonio Christian High School, and she goes underneath. And We've seen some good defensive plays here so far by these teams. Inbounds pass for Team Black. Off to the wing right is Welch. Off to Miller. Back over to Welch for three. 
nice know. rebound. And Mathis gets the rebound, loses it out of bounds, but it was slapped out by. Guys, if you see that leg brace on Eleni's right knee, she dislocated that knee um, back this past fall and was able to have surgery on it in November. She was out for two weeks. She really attributes her, fan her family and a lot of her friends at Antonian for helping her get back into the love of the game of the basketball, get back from that surgery. And here she is already making an impact in this All-Star game. Here's a dribble drive by Ryan Miller, and she's fouled going up. 15, 15 goal, Abigail Smith Abby Smith called for her first foul. At the free throw line is Ryan Miller from Poth High School. First and shot a little short. To get short. that shot, that, uh, Leah Romero from Devine had a great rebound to keep the ball down here on this side. Tell you what, I know that was a concern uh, for the Black All-Stars at a size disadvantage, but they've held their own in the paint, and Miller with the free throw gives Team Black their first lead. Under a minute to go here in the first quarters. Taylor Grona outside to Abby Smith, NBA range, and that one is no good. A fight for the rebound, and uh, Team Gold holds it, and Abby Smith drives in and gets fouled. Nice drive there. From the crowd, it sounds like they might have wanted a charge. They call uh, Miller from Poth on her first foul, so that is Abby Smith at the free throw line from Bernie High School. Abby averaged 12 and a half points and 6.1 rebounds per game. Had a chance, coach, to see her a little bit during the playoffs. She's, she's also a really good three-point shooter as well for the Greyhounds. And did you say she was gonna go play at Louisiana Tech? Uh, that's Avery Aarons going to Louisiana and, Tech, oh, but Abby Smith, Smith, a little smaller school she's going to as we get an open three here for Emily Mathis. Misses, but Team Black gets the rebound. They'll try it again. Contreras this time. No. And ball loose on the floor. Nice hustle. And Gold comes up with it. Broyles into the lane, gets blocked, and couldn't get the second shot up. And that ends the first quarter of play. The Team Gold All-Stars lead Team Black 14 to 13. Hey everybody, get up on your feet. It's time for the Army T-shirt time. You're watching the San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Welcome back to Northside Gym. Team Gold with a 14 to 13 lead. Bobby Stotzenberg along with Lytle's Lori Wilson along and Nick Mantis from KSAT 12. Bringing you the action as Team Black starts the second with the ball. Little dribble drive there and Garcia gets blocked and out of bounds off of Team Black. Any stats stand out to you coach in that first half? The first quarter, the for three, a lot of three-point shots, not a lot of makes. Yeah, they started out the game, and I think they're kind of settling in, getting to the basket a little bit more. So uh, Team uh, Gold, one for six from three-point land, two for nine for Team Black, as we have a foul called. One of the things that Coach Farber said during our practices is he wants to just put that ball up. They had 82 shots in one game this season. Look for them to continue doing that as we progress in this game. Alyssa Severe called for her first foul. Team Gold trying to add to their lead. A three from the right wing, no good from Sienna Kramer out of Navarro High School. Team Black the other way. Here's a long range three by Fike. Clara Fike with a miss. Her coach, David Farber, coaching the Black All Stars from Lavernia High School as we get. A dribble drive by Grona, forcing the issue a bit there, gets fouled. Yeah, Team Black's going to have to get back faster and get set in the, up for defense. Garcia called for the foul, and Taylor Grona at the free throw line. How about this stat, Coach? From the free throw line this year, Taylor Grona was 96.3%. Wow. <laughs> That's like Rick Berry range. He makes both free throws. No surprise there. 
16 to 13. I don't think I've heard of such a high free throw percentage. She doesn't miss, literally. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard that high either. <laughs> Team Black with the ball. Kendra Garcia out of Uvalde. On the drive in, gets all the way to the rack. Couldn't finish, though. Nice hustle nice. and a rebound by Cameron Childs. She's from Cole High School. And she forces the jump ball. Possession arrow will give it to Team Gold. Possession arrow, Team Gold. If you need any example as to how much this game means to these All-Stars, this isn't like the NBA All-Star game. They are diving on the floor for that ball. It means a lot to both of these teams. Yeah. Well, Lori, they're not getting paid millions uh, to not play defense. These girls want to win this game. Yeah, and have some bragging rights. This is the first of nice. all the All-Star games as Team Black gets the steal. Childs with the steal and the break. Over to Fike. Now Garcia. A little short on that three-point attempt. Right to Abby Smith. Now Avery Aaron from the free throw line takes the jumper. Good. Stop and shoot there from Avery Aaron. That was a nice little shot, yeah. Gold now with a third, excuse me, 18 to 13 lead. They led 14 to 13 at the end of one. Step back three. Their fight is good. That's Coach Farber's point guard right there with the three-pointer. She made 61 threes during the season for Coach Farber's Lavernia Bears. And she cuts the lead to two here. Avery Aaron up and under with the left hand and catching it on the other side is Estes. She gets blocked in Team Black on the fast break. Fike has hit slapped away by Grona. Loose ball again in his team goal. Nice defensive stop there. Well, one Grona. thing you know about girls basketball defensively, there's a, more so than, than in the boys' games. You get a lot of steals, mm -hmm. and you'll see some high numbers on steals. You got Grona with uh, almost six steals a game. Your uh, severe averages of about six and a half steals per game. If you're a good defensive player, you can get steals in high school nice girls' pass. basketball. Great delivery. Nice pass from Severe to Fink from Lavernia. There, Fink with the basket. And we're back to 18 to 18. And you saw the assist there from uh, Kalissa. She averaged about five and a half assists per game as Avery Aaron misses and grabs her own rebound. Oh. Puts it back up, no good. Now Grona, she'll try it and it's no good, but she's fouled. And should they go ahead and put the two points on the board since Grona's at the free throw line? I, I think I would bet on that. <laughs> that was some great rebounding by Team White. Again, I hope I don't give her the broadcaster's jinx here. No, I didn't. <laughs> Again, Taylor Groner from Fredericksburg at the line. She averaged 17 points a game. And again, folks, this is not a misprint. 96.3% from the free throw line. Just amazing. It's just automatic. Her mom, Carrie Grona, is the coach at Fredericksburg. And she gives Team Gold a 20 to 18 lead. Good first half here so far as we approach the midway part of the uh, second quarter of play. Spin around and Fike with the ball again. She's gonna try to, well, that's actually uh, Garcia. Turned around, shot off the glass, no good. And a traveling violation. Just a little hesitation there from Uvalde. Well, the other thing these girls have to get used to, these are all all-stars, so the speed of this game probably pretty quick uh, compared to what they're used to on a game-to-game on a -game basis. Avery Aaron from the baseline, turn around Jay Short. Rebounded by Kendra Garcia from Uvalde, oh, and Avery nice Aaron goes after and gets it back. Ooh. Now Taylor Grona in the lane, puts it up and in, and one. And the basket counts. Avery Aaron will not be denied when it comes to post play like that. Taylor Grona with eight points will have a. Taylor Grona with an and one. And an old fashioned three, Lori, coming up here from Taylor Grona, assuming she can make the free throw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there there's a surprise. The 96%er makes it. 
as it's a 23 to 18 lead. Taylor Grona, an early candidate for our player of the game, is the team gold with a, another, another steal. steal. Up the floor and a three point shot there by Zenner, no good. Rebound and this one out of bounds. And with 3.45 to go in the second quarter, we'll take a break. Team Gold with a 23 to 18 lead. You are watching the San Antonio Sports All Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Welcome back here to Northside Gym at the uh, Dub Ferris Athletic Complex. Bobby Stotzenberger alongside Lytle's AD and head girls basketball coach Lori Wilson. Nick Mantis from KSAT on the court as well. And it's hard to stand out in an all-star game, but Taylor Grohn has already done that for Team Gold. Yeah, she's playing a really great game. There you see the coach Amy Reedy as Team Black unforced air there. Abby Levings wasn't expecting that hot pass on the sidelines. Coach Reedy said during the practices we had earlier this week for this All-Star game, she, when we asked her how excited are you to be able to coach such a talented team in this All-Star group, she sounded like the Kool-Aid man. She just said, oh yeah, <laughs> when it came to how excited she was. So she's having a blast, not only getting to coach such a talented team, but two of her now former All-Stars, or former athletes who are playing in this All-Star game. 3.26 to go here in the first half. Team Gold with a 23 to 18 lead at the moment. Team Black with the basketball. Abby Levings shoots the three. Short off the front of the rim. Rebound and they'll try it again. Miller with a pop fake and goes in. Probably a smart decision there coached by Brian Miller. She bluffed the three and then drives in and draws contact. Yes, definitely try to get to the basket. Uh, we need it. Black Team Black's got 11 turnovers, so they just need to kind of make some better decisions here towards the end of the quarter, to the end of the half. That is free throws for uh, Ryan Miller from Polk High School. She misses the first. She was 64 percent this season from the free throw line, averaged seven points a game, and nice this rebound. Is the second, but rebound Team Black with a block shot. And now fight for the ball, and Avery Aaron using the uh, the stiff arm like a football player there. These girls came to battle. So it's Team Gold basketball. Jordan Jenner set to inbound. Team goal with a 23 to 18 lead. Yeah, coach, they were battling, and that just shows you how strong Avery Aaron is. She had three players on her, and they couldn't move her out of the way. Yeah, they didn't move her one inch. <laughs> that is the fifth foul this quarter. I, if they did restart that correctly. Yes, they did. The, the, it was 3 2 the first quarter. That was a big change in high school basketball this season. You get five. There's no more, the one and one's gone. The mm -hmm. seven team fouls and the one and one and 10 team fouls and two shots, that's no more. Now it's five fouls per quarter and nothing but two shot <laughs> fouls as Avery Aaron will take advantage of that with a free throw. You like the new rule, coach? Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're gonna press, you know, and then you, you're a real aggressive team and then you know to back off a little bit, but um, I think it did speed the game up some. And I think that's what most people are looking for. Some of the girls' games were lasting so long when you get that bonus. Avery Aaron makes two free throws and exits the game. And it's Team Black with the ball now trailing 25 to 18. Team Black with five points in this uh, quarter. And in the lane, there's Kayleen Castro. Can't finish. Team Gold the other way. And Mackenzie Huron steps there. In the NBA, that's called the crossover. In high school, it's called a travel. travel exactly. <laughs> I, I, how do you coach your team up there where, hey, I know you see this on TV a lot, but we're not going to get away with it at the high school level. Here's Levings for three. Nice, nice little rebound, rebound from Devine. Romero. And still on the ground. Still Look fighting. at Romero fighting for the ball. 
Now we get a jump ball, but that, you, you, sometimes you got to tell your team what you see on TV. That's that's not what we're doing at the high school level all the time. Yeah, because they get away with way too much at the NBA level. Team Gold has 11-5 advantage, Coach, in this second quarter. As they have the basketball with 2.15 to go here in the first half. Right corner. And there's a three. No good. Shot taken by McKenzie Huron. Great rebound by Abby from Cole. Back the other way, Team Black. Miller all the way. Good Thompson finish. Short. Rebounded by Huron. Again, she'll stop and try to hit the three a little bit short. And we're getting a lot of three-point shots here. They probably they got the green light more than they do during the season as Jordan Jenner comes up short on that. Now, in a real game, in a playoff game or district game, if your team's jacking that many threes, Coach, are you losing your mind? Yeah, we're probably already called a timeout <laughs> to talk about that. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice pass and the finish there by Kathleen. Castro, rather, from uh, Poth with the bucket, her fourth point of the game. Team goal, way downtown. That one's a little short. They've extended their uh, shooting range in this game. Team Black trying to bring it up. Neitz has it. Off to Miller. Miller goes in hard. And a collision, she will go to the line, I believe. They call that a shooting. Nope. Oh, Zoe yeah. and Topia from Somerset in the game. That's where oh, I graduated. They're give her free throws. Huh. That's where I graduated from high school, Somerset. Somerset. That's right, the Bulldogs. Great basketball tradition there as well. Yes, it is. Well, you didn't have to go far uh, from home. The coach no. at Lytle. Somerset and Lytle, how, what's the distance there, Coach? It's seven miles. <laughs> yeah, no traffic and no highway for me to get to work. Ryan Miller makes the nice first, rebound. misses the second. And another loose ball. To the floor they go. And we get another jump ball possession to Team Black. A little late run here, Coach, by Team Black at the end of the second quarter. Yeah, I think they settled down a little bit, and they're trying to get to the basket more. Well, they're also being aggressive, too. Uh, both Levings and Miller have kind of forced the issue a little bit driving in. Into the left corner is Neitz. She has a made three here to, today. Miller, excuse me, Levings, out high. Abby Smith all over. Yeah, this, this team gold has some great defense. Trying to get around and bounce pass is stolen. Up the floor it goes to Huron. And she backs it out. Into the corner. A lot of contact, yeah, not a lot of foul okay. calls, but talk about working her way in. That was a nice little shot. Mina Broyles from Blanco got bumped twice along the way there. She still continues the basket. There you go. Into the lane, off the glass, no good by Leah Romero. We're down to 10 seconds to go. Abby Smith, way downtown. A little bit short. Maybe one more chance here for Team Black. And at the buzzer. Here, coach, she just just throws got it up. in. Yep, nice little shot to get some momentum for Team Black going into the half. So there you have it. Great first half of basketball here. Team Gold with the lead, but Team Black making their move. We'll be back. Halftime show coming up. This is the San Antonio Sports All Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. We are at the half. Some fan competitions going on right now for the San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game. As we welcome you to Northside Gym here at the Dub Ferris Athletic Complex. 
Girls Class 1A through 4A and private school all-star basketball game, the first of its kind here from San Antonio Sports Foundation, or San Antonio SA Sports. Uh, that was a big three there at the end of the uh, first half to cut the lead down to three as uh, maybe the highlight of the first half there, finishing out the uh, highlights package as Crisis Human Performance presents our halftime highlights. Coach, you see the girls taking this seriously, diving for basketballs and hustling hard as Taylor Grona gets the bucket there. Here to have fun. That shot there by Kayleen Castro. And <laughs> Coach Amy Reedy, she's on the opposing squad. Even she had she to show sure. her appreciation <laughs> for that. That three-point shot there at the end certainly made it uh, manageable here for Team Black. And uh, Yeah, that shot came in clutch, and then that gives them the momentum to come back out from the half. We will have our first half stats here as you take a look. Uh, neither team shooting particularly great from the field, but there's a lot of challenged uh, shots in this game. And that's a, uh, if you look at the free throw percentage there by Team Gold, that's a lot of Taylor Grona making a lot of free throws. Yeah, but, she uh, went to the line uh, several times there that first half, and Coach, she's money every time. We, we talked about uh, perhaps Team Black being a little bit outsized in the game. They're, they've got the rebound lead right now, so they're holding their own very nicely here. Yeah, I, I think with Team Black, it's just there was a few turnovers there that, that Team uh, Gold got to, to capitalize on on the other end. Turnovers, uh, 13 to nine. Team Black uh, turning it over a few more times. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more from Northside Gym in a moment. This is the SA Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Welcome back here to Northside Gym. As the uh, Team Gold leads 27 to 24 over Team Black. Bobby Stotzenberg along with Lori Wilson from Lytle High School. Nick Mantis from KSAT. Lori, Okay, so the first half, pretty even. Now, as a coach, do you, it, 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 when you're trying to win at the end of an all-star game, you, first things first, get the girls playing time, and they've done that. And you'll see that more in the second half as well. But when it gets down to crunch time at the end, do you go with who has the hot hand or who has the big reputation? I'd probably say that last three minutes, if it's a close game, you're going to go with the hot hand. Whoever's hot in this game. Yes. Because some, some of these players have gigantic stats and maybe haven't shot maybe as much as they normally would in a game like this. It's a real filling out process from a coach. And, and you know these coaches at the end are going to try to win the game. Exactly. And then just kind of seeing a little bit of chemistry. Like you said, they only had three practices together. It's kind of hard to have that. But I'm impressed by both teams and the way they're playing. Nick, your thoughts on uh, the first half? Rona, five for five from the line. A 96% free throw shooter is just going to continue to get better as this game goes on. You'll see when she comes out, she actually has a cut on one of her hands. I was asking the training staff here on the sideline what was going on with that. Why did they tape it up? Is there something more than that? They said you just wanted to make sure the Band-Aid stayed where it is because it's going to get sweaty. It might get a little, you know, it's loose when it comes to where it's going to be. So a cut on that hand is going to be something to look out for, whether or not it's going to maybe get in the way of her hat Having that 96% from the line as a, which she continues to go throughout the rest of this game, but not just her shooting performance, but I'm, I'm assuming they're going to look to Avery Aaron and her dominant per play down low as they continue to go through this second half. And it's going to be exciting to see. I mean, we saw that this game got close because of a crazy shot from almost half court. Maybe we're going to get that at the end of this game, and it could be something to look out for as you know, Team Black is just told that they need to just put the ball up as they continue to try to stay close with this game. And, you know, it can be a dogfight as we get down to the final minutes. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, we'll have the second half right after the, these messages. This is the San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Welcome back to the first ever San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game. I'm here with the head coach of Team Gold, Coach Amy Reedy, coached 27-24 at halftime. Has this game lived up to your expectations of an All-Star game with these talented San Antonio Ballers? 
No, I think it's been a true definition of an all-star game. I think the kids have come out here and they're competing. They're trying to showcase their skills, but still playing team basketball. And it's been really fun to see the competitive nature of all of the kids on both teams, but just how they want to win and they still want to compete. Now, the competitive nature you can see from Avery Aaron, one of, one of your, your talented uh, all-stars all with Bernie. How exciting is it to see that she looks like she wants to play for a state championship with the effort of diving for loose balls and stuff like that? Well, I think for all of them, you know, they come out and they want to compete every time they step on the floor, and that, that's what makes them all-stars. That's what makes them special. So I, don't, I didn't expect anything less. I think the second half is going to be a lot of fun. You know that buzzer beater at the end. That's what makes all-star games fun. So I'm looking forward to a great second half. Coach, thank you for your time. Enjoy it. Guys, we'll send it back to you. All right, second half about to get underway here. A big three-point shot by Kalen Castro from Poth sets the stage perhaps for a comeback here by Team Black as Team Gold starts with the basketball. And Coach uh, Reedy went with her starting five of Grona, Zenner, George, Smith, and Aaron as outside is Taylor Grona for an open three. And I think nope. Coach Farber, he changed up his starting lineup. He switched it a little bit. Emily Mathis tries to break it as Team Black will move left to right. And Coach, uh, as you mentioned, David Farber with a completely different uh, starting lineup for the second half. I guess we'll see if there's some strategy behind that later on in the game. Baseline drive and a steal by Grona. She'll throw it up the floor for the fast break and nice transition defense there by Fike to get back and get the block shot. Yes, great defensive effort getting back to stop the basket. Watch this effort right here as she gets all ball there. It's all ball. Inbound to Avery Aaron. Couldn't finish. Ava Welch from San Antonio Christian with the uh, rebound. As Cameron Childs from Cole High School goes over to Fike. She had a three there, but passed on it. Mathis on the dribble drive, has her pocket picked, and down to the floor they go again. Seems it will like be every Team time Black. Team Black has the ball inside the paint, they're double teamed by White, Team Gold. About a minute into this second half, Team Black with the basketball. And nice look there at Ava Welch. Nice three San Antonio Christian with their first three points. That ties it. And Abby Smith tries to answer, doesn't. Her teammate from Bernie, Avery Aaron, goes up with it and gets fouled. And Coach, one thing I've noticed is they've extended the three-point line, I think, for, for both teams. And Because these are girls that can really shoot. Now, we saw a few air balls early because that is nine, most of the time in a regular season game kind of out of your range, but because these are such great shooters, I think coaches are, are fine with these long threes. Yeah, you can tell, like you said earlier, they, they've, gave, they've given them the go to go to shoot it, so there's no hesitation. Avery Aaron, right at around 70% on the season from the free throw line. She averaged a double-double. Yeah, right now she's, she, uh, she's taking over in the inside. It's hard for Black to stop her. 29-27. In the corner, and they're going to call that out of bounds. Cam Camera Childs couldn't quite get the pass down the baseline that she wanted. Team Gold quickly the other way for three. Shot missed there. Back comes Team Black. Childs all the way in, and Avery Aaron makes her pay. Yeah, that was a big block shot. Zenner throws to the right wing. Three ball, yes. Another big three for Team Gold. That was Zenner with the three, her first make from three point land. Welch will try to answer, she does. How about Ava Elch getting the start, Coach, in the second half? She's got two threes already. Two back-to-back -back threes, yes. Team Black hanging tough. It's 32-30. Taylor Grona tried to drive in. And Team Black on the floor with it. They'll got start the break. break. 
Mathis uh, all the way down the floor, but Welch was a little too far underneath. Yeah, she got too far under the basket on that. Team Gold quickly back. Angle drive by Sophia George, and she lays it in. That was a nice drive. Sophia George, 5'7 guard out of Canyon Lake High School. Gold with a four-point lead. Another three. was a nice three. Ava Welsh is playing in her final co competitive high school basketball game. And she's not going to play at the next level. She's going to study business at Texas A&M next year. She's excited to just let it all out when it comes to shooting these huge threes for Team Black. She's like the, the kid from uh, Oakland in the NCAA tournament. He made, what, 10 threes the other night? And Ava's got three, three. here in the quarter. Yeah, she's on fire. She's the hot hand. They need to keep getting her the ball. Welch again. This time, a little, a little, that one may have been partially blocked. Yeah, I thought it was tipped there. Well, maybe not. They said it's out of bounds, and all Ava could do there was just smile and laugh that <laughs> one off. Coach Farber visibly confused as to why that wasn't called a block. He just kind of just laughs it off and said, okay, well, that's what it is. Team Goldo turns it over. <laughs> Coach, is that part of a strategy in any basketball game? If you have someone that's just shooting lights out, does the rest of the team instinctively or instructively know to get her to the ball? I think, yeah, any teammate's going to know, let's try to get her the ball if she hit that many in a row. Now it looks like we're going to probably look for someone else to go to. Bike off the screen, throws it to Childs. She drives in and puts it up no good. Team Gold back the other way. As Peyton Brown had some struggles getting it across, but she does to Abby Smith. Taylor Grona scoreless so far in the second half. Started to drive in. And loses it, but that was deflected out. Team Black's defense has stepped up pretty good here this third quarter. We will take a break. 34-33 Team Gold. This is the San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Team Gold by one with the basketball. And we have a new set of lineup here oh. for Black. Taylor Grona couldn't handle the inbounds. And Coach Farber making some uh, subs for Team Black. A chance to take the lead here, yeah, Coach, for Team see. Black. And uh, trying to do it is uh, Kendra Garcia, but she gets her shot partially blocked there. Team Gold back with the basketball. Nice pass inside and the finish by Mina Royals. Mina Broyles from Blanco High School with their fourth point. Tell you what, Team Black, that's twice Kendra Garcia has Mina Broyles, coach just attacked the basket two trips in a row, and now she'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, and hopefully we can knock these free, throw free throws line. down. Kendra Garcia from Uvalde, Texas. First free throw good, that's her first point. Kendra told us during the media day for the All-Star game that she's just so proud to have an opportunity to represent Uvalde, represent her community, and, and make sure that the girls who are coming after her, the younger girls who are probably watching her right now, know that you can be an All-Star too. Garcia's second free throw is no good. Rebound, team goal. As Avery Aaron, no looks it into the corner. Everybody way out way on up. the perimeter, and Aaron's going to take a three. No nice good, rebound. but it's rebounded by Kramer. Now it's loose on the floor. She'll pick it back up. Over to Huron. 
Now and Topia. And Avery Aaron who forces it up against Mel. Coach, we mentioned uh, Kendra Garcia from uh, Uvalde. They got to play in the KSAP Pigskin Classic. And little known story, folks. The lady sitting next to me, Lori Wilson, had a, played a role in that because you agreed to switch games for Lytle with Jefferson to allow Uvalde to play in the KSAP Pigskin Classic. So we certainly appreciate that. That was a nice gesture on your part. Yeah, and that was a great thing that y'all were able to do that for those kids in that community. Avery Aaron makes, there's a lot of unsung heroes in putting things together. You're one of them for sure, Coach. Well, thank you so much. Aaron oh, makes nice. both free throws, but answer three. There's a three from Calissa Severe. That is the second made three for Calissa Severe. Her first three of this half is back to a one-point game. Uh, and that one dribbled off the legs. You know, Calissa, in a game like this, is she the kind that can heat up in a in like a microwave? Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to be because usually it's just her going to the basket every time. Now she has she has some good teammates that uh, she can count on here. Oh. Oh, no. was from the corner, not quite from half court like she did at the end of the second quarter, but Team Black has gained the lead. And Avery Aaron taking the matters in her own hand. She's just too strong in inside. She just dominates in that paint. You see there on the replay, Ryan Miller from Polk, she tried to jar, draw the charge because just, just man up against uh, Avery Aaron, you're probably not going to stop her. And she makes a free throw. She's 7 for 7 from the line now with 13 points. She's having a great afternoon. So Team Gold regains the lead. Baseline drive, and Castro loses it off her leg. Yeah, off her foot. Guys, I consider myself a pretty dominant post player during my playing days. I'm watching Avery Aaron right now. I want no problems from her. I want none of the smoke. She, she's driving the lane. I'm getting out of the way. <laughs> she sets a nice screen there. And now in the lane. And an and one for Zoe Antopia from Somerset. That was a great rebound. And to finish with that basket. Antopia with the free throw. The 5-5 guard out of Somerset gets a three-point play. Now Gold's up by four. This one up. Oh, they're going to say last touch by Team Black. Kendra Garcia was defended by Avery Aaron, and she just put a lot of pressure on her, and it was last touch by Garcia. One minute to go here in the third. First of four games here at Northside Gym. Team Gold. Back to Avery Aaron. Pull up jumper. Good. Avery Aaron now with nine points, coach, in this third quarter. Yeah, she's looking really good this sec this third quarter. A little pump fake there by Garcia. Off to the wing right, Levings. Now to Severe, spin move, and Severe puts it up. No good. But she got herself some space there for the shot. Yeah. Team Gold's got their defense is really looking good right now. Maybe one shot here. See if Coach Amy Reedy will do that in an all-star game. She does. Ten seconds to go. Do you think it's going to be a three-pointer? Let's see. I, I'm, I would guess yes. <laughs> Avery Aaron along the sidelines will take the three. No good. That ends the third. Team Gold, 46. And Team Black, 40. The girls 1A through 4A plus private school. SA Sports All-Star Basketball Game continues in a moment on KSAT 12. Welcome back to the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game. I'm here with Coach Farber. Coach, does this lift up to your expectations of what an All-Star Game could be? Everything, everything. The expectations are high, and the kids are playing so well. They're getting after it. They're up and down. They're shooting the ball. They're congratulatory to each other. They're being positive. It's just, hey, everything is super. 
I know you mentioned after 33 years, this is your final high school basketball game that you are coaching. You have your family here. Your daughter's in the stands right over there taking pictures and making sure you can share this special moment with them. I know this is an emotional game for you. How exciting is it to be able to play in front of them one last time? This is uh, beyond what I dreamed about. So it is super. It's awesome to see my whole family up here. And it's just, it's a great way to go out. Well, before I get you crying, I'll let you go back to it, okay? Thank you, Coach. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Well, sports is emotional, Coach, and uh, David Farber, very happy to be here in his final game as a, a basketball coach. Yeah, yeah, a little you, emotional there. You can see the emotion, yes. Love seeing that from him, and, and what an amazing uh, way to go out coaching an all-star game. You get a foul on Team Black. That would be against Ella Neitz. Ella Neitz, again, missed much of the season for Antonian, but the uh, Lady Apaches, really, really good team that went to the semifinals, and they'll be, might even be better next year where they have a lot of great young talent there. Free throw, no good. Second shot goes for Elena Estes from Hondo. She makes one out of two that trip. Gold's up 47 to 40. So a seven point lead here. Black with the basketball. As points in the paint, 18 to eight in favor of Team Gold as Leah Romero tried to change that but gets blocked. Gold back the other way. A three, rim glass and no good. Rebound lost by Team Gold. No, they're going to call it, yep, Team Gold basketball. As Elena Estes from Hondo inbounds it. Now Avery Aaron on the drive in with the left hand, spins it no good. She'll go to the line for two. When she got that ball, you knew she was going to attack. Leah Romero with her first foul. Avery Aaron with nine points in the third quarter. That's her first miss at the free throw line where she's seven for eight. Her coach, Amy Reedy. As Aaron may able to make the second free throw. Now 16 points. She leads all scores. Team Black has some work to do. They'll oh, get a full bank. How about that, Denise Contreras? Three-pointer off the backboard. From Divine. Team, and Coach, I... Team Black needed that shot. Avery Aaron, little up and under move, and she puts it in. And a lot of folks think of Divine and the War Horses, but the girls are the Arabians. Yeah. Denise Contreras from the Divine Arabians. Yeah, we play, three. we play coach sessions in the Arabians two to three times a year, sometimes when we see him in tournaments. He has a great program down there, does a great job. Foul on Team Gold, and Coach, there was a time, particularly in the probably mid-80s to mid-90s, where Divine Girls dominated in a lot of sports, volleyball and basketball particularly. Yeah, when I was in high school, uh, yeah, and Coach Sessions' mom was down there. She was the coach. Uh, she had some great programs in some years. Still by Team Black. Team Gold gets back on defense as Ella Neitz. And again, it might be that right knee that she's not 100% that she couldn't quite beat the defense down. Team Gold, how about that free throws? 16 of 17. As a coach, you got to smile about that. Ball lost out of bounds by Team Black. Team Black, there's the difference in the game, Coach. Yeah, free throw three. line. Yep. And they're nine for 21 for the three-point line. Team Black gets a steal. They needed that defensive stop there. And Coach Amy Reedy 
going to ride with this group right now and see how far they can get them into the fourth quarter of play here. Team Black has some work to do as Denise Contreras gets fouled. Sienna Kramer out of uh, Navarro called for her first foul. Navarro always has a good program up there. Denise Contreras, the divine Arabian with the free throw. We'll go to Nick here in a moment with a special guest. As nice the rebound. Throw, no good, but a rebound and put back foul. attempt. <laughs> Peyton Brown called for her second foul. And Leah Romero, from also from Divine. The two Divine girls. Yeah, they have two on the team. Getting into the action. This is Leah Romero. That's her first point. Now it's a five-point lead. She needs to knock this one down also. Second shot. There you Good. go. Well, we're back to four. Almost five minutes left in the game. Quick three right there. Pull up three, this bank no good. Rebounded by Team Gold and a putback attempt. Is, we've got a special guest standing by with Nick Mantis. Guys, a very, very special guest when it comes to not just Coach Farber, but the entire Farber family. Uh, Miss Farber, if I may say so, it's been an emotional day for your entire family. What has this meant for not just you to see him coaching, but throughout his entire career as he ends it after 33 years? Well, um, I would love to say I'm his first love, but it may be a tie. Um, he has always been about basketball. Um, he, he just loves the game and he loves coaching. And he loves kids. Uh, we would, both wouldn't have been in this business if we didn't dearly love kids. So I've spent many a, a day in a gym, just like today, along with my kids. I've raised both of them in a gym. So, um, and he's been great. Uh, just a, he's an inspiration to his, his family and his kids and um, has always been uh, there for his students and the, the girls and boys that he's coached. You have also a little special connection with both coaches, having been the principal at Bernie and having hired Coach Reedy. What does it mean to you to see them going against each other now? You, you, you kind of set your husband up for, for this matchup. <laughs> Well, uh, Amy Reedy, she is such a talented coach, and I remembered when we hired her at Bernie High School. And David and her have been rivals coaching him when he was in Bandera. And it's just great to see that this is how he ends. They both respect each other so much and uh, have a big heart for Bernie, Bernie High School. Uh, I was there for a decade of my life in uh, a great town, great people and Amy is, is a product of that. And having generations of basketball players here, your son has flown in from Orlando. His father-in-law is also in town. It's a, a special moment for all of you guys. You, you said you have an idea as to where you're gonna, gonna eat after this. You gotta pick somewhere great. Uh, after, I mean, after today? Uh, well, um, we're both looking forward to retirement. We're gonna go have a big family meal together to celebrate. We've got people from all over the state in, and like you said, out of state. And then uh, we are retiring in Victoria. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. He also mentioned that golf is now in his future for the next couple. So you, you're gonna let him just go have fun doing that? I'm gonna let him have fun playing golf. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. He deserves it. It's well deserved. This is Reedy. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Guys, back to you. Coach oh. Farber's wife has Avery Aaron now showing some range, Coach. Yeah, that was a nice big three-pointer for them. Get back to sweating. Avery Aaron. Now with 21 points. And Team Gold now extends their lead. And a three-point answer, though. Abby from Cole. Abby Levings from Cole High School, her first three of the game and a big one. Gives Black a fighting chance as we will uh, take a timeout here midway through the fourth quarter of play. Gold with a 54 to 49 lead. You, you're watching the San Antonio All-Star basketball game on KSAT 12.
All right, back to play here as Well, we uh, this is the first time, this is the first of four games. We missed a few plays there because they continued on uh, during the break there. But uh, the uh, goal holding on here, uh, Black's going to have to make a run here, Coach. The final 3.28 to go. But a lot of those superstar players for the gold squad back in and a three-point lead. Yep, three-point game right here. Gold with the basketball as Grona would put up the three and it's short. And she saves it, or thought she did. That was great hustle on her part, yeah. Out of bounds off of Team Gold. Team Black's got a score here. A three could tie it. It comes to Severe. Severe up, had the three blocked by Grona. Grona was just close enough. And now Taylor Grona the other way. Oh, there we go. Has her Another pocket steal. pick from behind. Up the floor it goes to Severe, into the lane, and she's fouled. That is team foul three. three. Abby fouls, Smith called for the foul. Fouls are pretty even this quarter, five to three. Team Black in the bonus, two more, and uh, Gold will be our team Black with five team fouls, so team Gold in the bonus. Oh, nice. Nice oh. inbounds pass. Quick hands on the defensive part. Yeah, Severe had it kind of stripped away there by Zenner out of Fredericksburg. They have active hands, Team Gold. Severe baseline drive slips, and that, Avery Aaron goes to the floor to get the basketball. And we have uh, Calissa Severe getting up slowly there. She kind of lost her footing there. Yeah, she slipped. She's a tough kid, though. I know she'll. She'll shake it off. Yeah, you'd have to drag her off the floor, <laughs> won't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she doesn't want to come out. I think she's being told to come out. <laughs> so Kayla, Kaylin Castro back into the game now. Castro has 10 points. She's having a good day here. She does, yeah, and she's had those three-point shots, particularly the one at the end of the half. We will name our player of the game for each squad, and she's certainly in the running. For uh, Team Black. Another free throw for Team Gold. Now they're trying to put a little full-court yeah, pressure on yeah, us. Yeah, a little pressure. Yeah, on the black. <laughs> Two thirty-seven to go. Team Black needs to score on this possession. Yeah, it's getting uh, close to crunch time. Off a screen, Leving shoots a three, no good. Gets her own rebound. rebound, back into the corner to Fike. Fike trying to get around Avery Aaron, gets forced into the baseline. Good defense there by Aaron, using her body, but a steal by Team Black. Childs tries to get it outside to Garcia, stolen away, but right back to Team Black, Black with two score. minutes to go. Blocked pass. What? Oh. <laughs> Just batting it around somebody oh trying goodness. to get a shot off here. The ball. I think we changed like possessions there like huh? five times in that one possession. You want to credit the steal, but you get another steal before you can credit it's the first one. I think we had about four steals in the 40 second span there. Never got past half court. <laughs> Avery Aaron walks it up. Team Gold will probably try to use some time here. Abby Smith gives it to Avery Aaron. Now Abby again. She goes in with the left hand, no good. Gets her own rebound and puts it back up and in. Team 
Team Black probably needs points yeah, and timeout they... on this possession. Levings. He called it timeout. Oh, we get a timeout on the floor. Well, Nick, uh, this is a critical possession, I think, for Team Black and Coach uh, David Farber realizes they have the timeouts left, so why not use them? But you got to score first. Yeah, and it seems like Coach Farber is going to switch up a couple of players, bringing two new players onto the court. We'll find out who that is when they come out after this timeout. But Coach Farber always wanted to make sure that he was going to, you know, go for trying to get as many players in there. But at the end of the day, these two head coaches know each other pretty well. And for one last game for Coach Farber, he, he's probably going to want some bragging rights when it comes to being in the first ever All-Star game. Why not go out with a bang with 1-11 left in six-point game? This is going to be a crucial possession for Team Black. Coach Lori Wilson, is that the strategy now? Score, get the next time out, set up a press perhaps? Or Yeah, I would, I would definitely go full court press, try to get a turnover. I actually think that's the first time out in the game that's taken by the coaches. That we've had two TV. We've had the, TV the four ones. TV timeouts. You're right on that. Media timeouts, but no. So both teams with plenty of timeouts remaining. Black needs a three-pointer right here. Bounce to fight. Nice. Yes. He's not going to call a timeout. They may have set up the press. Yeah, they might have told yeah. him at the timeout previous. Abby Smith baseline drive gets rejected, but. Leving's going to be called for the foul. Yeah, that was a two for a timeout there. He, they set up the inbound play to get the three plus the full court press. Abby Smith makes a free throw. She's three for three from the line. You could tell when Smith got that ball, she knew she was going to the basket. Okay. Smith makes both, two big free throws. Now a five-point game. Team Black needs a three. Levings, a little hesitation. Over to Fike. Fike, long range. No. Nice rebound. And foul on the putback attempt. Kayleen Castro will go to the line. Before the game ends, Bobby, I just want to tell you thanks for having me on here. I had so much fun today. This is so, so exciting to be part of. It, it's, it's been a lot of fun, and we're just getting started here. I am, at least. I know you have the rest of your day as well, but I know you came to see your Col player, Calissa Severe, uh, perform here today. She's had a good day with two threes and eight points. Yeah, and then she's going to participate in the skills challenge. Misses both free throws when uh, Team Black really needed them. Yeah. That might be enough for Team Gold to go ahead and finish this off. I, I agree. Unless you want to start fouling, that's your option. You don't want to foul her. No. Taylor Krona yeah. over to Zenner. And now Abby Smith going to finish it off here. That should do it. Maybe one more shot here for Team Black. Miller. Throws it outside. Castro puts up the shot, and that will do it. 54 to 51 to 54. 61 54, our final. Team Gold wins it. And we'll be back with the ceremonies post game here in just a moment. You're watching the San Antonio All Star, San Antonio Sports All Star basketball game on KSAT 12. Welcome back, everyone. We want to start off with a please welcome the president and CEO of San Antonio Sports, Jenny Carnes, and the Judson High School coach, Christina Camacho, to present the win our winning team with the Christina Camacho Championship Trophy. Thank you, Nick. What a game. First of all, fans, let's give it up for an incredible inaugural San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball game. Pause for a second. What a way to kick off. What's going on there? I don't either. 
All right, here we go. All right. Let's give it up for these two great teams kicking off the inaugural San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball game once again. Our mission at San Antonio Sports is to transform this community through the power of sport, healthy community, events that impact, places to play. This is an event that impacts because we get to celebrate these high school seniors one more time on the court. Congratulations to all of you for being All-Stars. And to Team Black, Coach Farber, what a great game. What a great competition today. Congratulations to Team Black. But there's only one winner, Coach Amy Rudy, Team Gold, come on over. Before we hand this trophy over in our inaugural year, it was very important to us that we get the names of our four trophies right. And it was an easy decision to name the 1A through 4A inaugural trophy after my good friend, Christina Camacho. She's one of the winningest coaches in San Antonio girls high school basketball history, over 35 seasons, 790 wins. Congratulations on winning the inaugural Christina Camacho trophy. We are moments away from the player of the game announcement. There you see the trophy for Team Gold. 61-54 winners. All right, now let's get to our impact player of the game. Congratulations again to Team Gold, but when we have an impact player, that player is gonna go off for an incredible amount of points, rebounds, and assists. None other than Avery Aaron, who finished with 21 points, nine rebounds, two assists, and two blocks. Congratulations, Avery. All right. Well, 61-54 as Avery Aaron gets the player of the game. And uh, Coach Lori Wilson, no surprise there. Avery did what Avery always does is uh, to go out and dominate. And she's quite the player. She's headed to Louisiana Tech. They've, the Ragin' Cajuns have a good find there. What? That's what I love about her. She could have just been a dominant post player, but she worked on her game and became a good outside player as well, which she's going to need at the next level. Well, thanks, Coach. We've enjoyed the uh, uh, time with you, and uh, we are going to join our friends at KSAT here in just a moment from Northside Gym and be back with the boys' all-star game in about 20 minutes or so. So until then, Lori, thank you again. Lori Wilson from Lytle. High School, the AD and girls basketball co coach, our guest analyst here, Nick Plantis, as well on the sideline. I'm Bobby Stotzenberger. We'll see you in a moment for the boys game. 61-54, the Gold All-Stars win game one. <laughs>